Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we're gonna to be diving right into Premiere Pro, and I'm gonna be running you through a simple three-step process on how I take my footage from looking something like this to a little something like this. And this three-step process is the process I used to color grade all of my footage. It's super simple, it's super basic, it's super easy, but my goodness, is it effective. So without further ado, let's dive in. Let's get started. All right, so here we are in Premiere Pro and this is the shot we're working with. This was shot in Istanbul, which is a lovely little city in Turkey. I'm kidding, it's absolutely massive, but it is lovely, of course. And we've just got this guy setting up his, uh, his little fishing pole here, going for a fish off a bridge with a beautiful mosque in the background. So this is what we're working with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into the color tab here. So up the top, you can see we've got color selected. And from here, we just wanna make our way over to the metric color. We're gonna close vignette for some reason that's open. Let's open up the basic correction and let's get started. So just to let you guys know, this was shot in C-Log3. So this means it's fairly flat. I have a whole lot of stuff to work with, you know, a whole lot of colors to push and pull, contrast, light, you name it. I can really manipulate this like crazy. So this first step is really only for people that are shooting in flat color profiles or log profiles. And the reason is because we're going to manually correct this. A lot of people use correction LUTs, so you can go onto Canon or Sony or Panasonic, whoever you shoot with, onto their website and download what is called a correction LUT, which is gonna get you to Rec 709. Now, I know I'm throwing a whole lot of stuff at you right now, but pretty much this is just a whole lot of jargon for taking your footage from looking really flat to looking contrasted and saturated. So I personally do that myself, and if you're wondering, I don't do it myself every single time. I do use my own LUTs, which have correction baked into them. If you wanna go check out my cinematic LUTs, you'll be able to see them in action in just a minute, but you can do so by checking them out in the description below. You can use this code at checkout for a cheeky little discount. But like I said, we're going to be doing the correction ourselves, and this way you just get a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more control, and a little bit more, you know, you can tailor it to your shot. So anyway, let's dive in. So first things first, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna, uh, we're gonna increase the contrast. Now this is just gonna bring a little bit more richness into our shot. It's gonna lower the, high, uh, lower the shadows and increase the highlights. And we're gonna do that even more here. We're just gonna increase those highlights ever so slightly. There we go, and I'm instantly noticing this is probably a little bit warm, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cool that off just a little bit, and what we can do is we can either come over here, or we can come up here to the FX button, and we just turn it off and back on, and you can instantly see this shot is already looking so much nicer. So this is pretty much step number one. You wanna correct your shot. You wanna add a little bit more color, a little bit more contrast into it, but something that I personally do is I don't add any color here. All I do is add contrast. So once again, we're gonna be dropping those shadows in the curves here, we're gonna be increasing those mid-tones, we're gonna be increasing the highlights ever so slightly, and I think this is starting to look good. We might add another curve just here, just to really bring those shadows back. Boom, there we go. I think things are looking very, very nice here. If anything, the sky might be just a little bit blown out, but we don't need to worry about that whatsoever because the second little step in our three-step process is adding a LUT. So let's head on over to our creative panel here, and this is where we can add a LUT. I'm gonna hit browse, and this is gonna bring up your finder on your file explorer, whatever computer you may be using is gonna be different, but either way, these are my Canon LUTs that you can find in my cinematic LUT pack link down below. I mentioned that just a little bit before, but these are the LUTs I use on a day-to-day -day basis. And for this, of course, we shot on Canon, so we're gonna be using the Canon LUTs, but you can find Sony, Panasonic, DJI, GoPro, you name it. You can see everything over on my website. But either way, I think we're just gonna go with Canon one. This is a pretty standard shot. We're not looking to do anything crazy here. You know, we don't have, really have any greens. Sure, it's warm, but I'm trying to dial back the warmth, if anything. Um, and it's not blue hour yet. You know, some of my favorite LUTs I've got is blue hour one right here and blue hour two, but we're just gonna go with Canon one because it is a little bit of gold now, but I'm not trying to accentuate the golden hour look. So let's apply that and boom. You might be thinking to yourself, Zach, this looks pretty bad. But like I said to you before, my LUTs already have the correction baked into it. So what we're gonna do is to change that. And by the way, if you weren't shooting in log or you were shooting in Rec 709 or you weren't, you weren't shooting with a flat color profile, if you apply one of my LUTs, it's probably gonna look fairly similar to this. All you have to do is dial down the intensity and instantly we're gonna be getting a beautiful look. So you can see just by turning this off and on, we're getting a beautiful, nice kind of blue contrast over our entire shot. But as you can see, our, our friend here, our guy, our fisherman, if you will, his skin tones are staying really, really nice. So instantly, I'm loving this. That is pretty much step number one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna dial this in just a little bit. We're gonna come into the color wheels and match, and we're just gonna add a little bit of blue into our highlights. Nothing too crazy, because what I want to do here is I really want our friend here to be 
contrasting from everything else. So as you can see in the background, we've got the mosque here, it's a little bit blue. We've got the sky, we're gonna be giving that a little bit of a blue tint by adding some uh, blue into the highlights. And then everything else, you don't have much orange in the shot, so that's how we're gonna get him to stand out. So we might have been taking this just the wrong way ever so slightly. Yeah, that's a little bit better. It was a little bit green before. So as you can see there, we might dial that back just a little bit, a little before and after. You can also click these little uh, check boxes here and it'll just turn off one individual tool. But as you can see, I'm much preferring this. I think this is looking very dialed. And if we turn the whole thing off and back on again, you can see we are cooking with gas. So that is pretty much step number two. We're gonna apply our look, we're gonna apply our colors, and let's move on to step number three. So step number three is an interesting one, and it's one that not a lot of, not many people talk about at all, and that's masking. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna dive into the Lumetri color tab up here, and we're gonna add a new, uh, uh, a new Lumetri color effect. We're then gonna uh, add a little circle here, and the first thing I wanna do is make sure we are getting no kind of really dark spots on, on our friend here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, ah, we're gonna increase our feather once I work out how to use a computer for the first time. Uh, we're gonna make this just a little bit bigger and then we're just gonna increase the shadows ever so slightly. We might have gone a little bit too hard. I think I like the contrast overall in the, uh, in the entire shot, but just right here, it's a little bit dark. I guess this is where he was a little bit in the shadow. I'm gonna raise the blacks ever so slightly. I'm gonna raise the shadows as well. And what we can do is we can turn this off and back on. I think that's looking good. I also don't think that stands out at all. So if we, if we play this back, it's not looking like it's a weird mask over the shot. It just looks fairly natural, which is perfect. And chances are, I'm not gonna use the entire three seconds anyway, but you guys get the idea. So that is, uh, that's step number one. We're gonna close that. That's mask number one, I should say. We're, we're up to step number three. Anyway, we're gonna add another Lumetri color effect up the top here, and then we're gonna come in here. We're gonna make this nice and big. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be adding a vignette over the entire shot. Now, since I don't really want uh, our friend's little shoulder arm spot in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mask that out fairly carefully, just like this. And then we're gonna to start to increase the feather and just before it touches him, I'm gonna stop. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to control everything outside of the image, or everything outside of the mask, I should say, once I click invert, and this will allow us to give, well, this will allow us to have a custom vignette because if I was just to use the vignette tool down here, sure, it's great, but it wouldn't have allow, allowed us to do this, which is just gonna make him dark again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just drop the exposure ever so slightly, we're gonna drop the shadows, and you're gonna be able to see, if we zoom out here, we might have made this just a little, oh, <laughs> we might have made this a little bit big. All right, let's, uh, let's come in here. So we're gonna just reduce this ever so slightly, make this a little tighter on our shot. Can we add another point in there? Yes, we can, beautiful. Okay, that's cool, let's go back to fit. All right, let's turn this off and back on. Yeah, we're definitely cleaning up this area here, and I also believe the area behind our friend Boom, off and on, Not nothing, nothing too crazy. We might have to bring this in just a little bit more, just like that, might move it over as well. And let's just keep dropping the shadows, just like that, okay. So if we click off this now, we can see what we're working with. I think things are looking very good. There's only one last thing I wanna do, which is of course, is adding another mask. And that is gonna be just like this. We're then going to, oh, we're in the wrong, one. wait, are we? No, we can't be. Okay, no, we do have the new one. All right, there we go. Premiere Pro was just, uh, I guess, being Premiere Pro. Either way, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna increase the feather on this one like crazy, and we're gonna drop the shadows because I really want this mosque to stand out a little bit more. As you can see, if I turn this off and then back on, it's a little bit faded, it's a little bit hazy over there. That could be from some light coming into the shot, whatever the case, um, it's kind of perched up high on a hill, so I guess it collects quite a lot of light, especially at that golden hour time with it coming in. But either way, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the, uh, drop the shadows here, and we're gonna come back to this area here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play, I wanna be able to play it, but I wanna be able to see where the mask is the whole time. Okay, that actually, I've done a pretty good job at shooting this, which means the mask doesn't need any tracking. So I'm fairly happy with exactly how that looks. And to be honest with you, this is our final shot. So actually, before it is, I'll, uh, I'll eat those words real quick. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're just gonna drop the, drop the saturation. Whoop, we're gonna drop the saturation on our first Lumetri color that affects the whole thing of the oranges just ever so slightly just to make his skin a little bit more a little bit more subtle and there we go i'm really liking this so let's have a look let's uh let's watch this clip back i think things are looking very tasty very tasty indeed it's nice it's simple it's short it's elegant and if we have a look here if we turn this mask off then this mask off then this mask off okay 
things are looking all right, but they could definitely be better. And then boom, this is where we started. So if we turn this back on, that was our first two steps. And then just adding these subtle little touches around the shot makes it what it is. And that's pretty much a nice, simple, easy, quick three-step process. I mean, hey, how long have we been recording for? We've been recording for like 11 minutes, 10 minutes, however long. Uh, but either way, that is just a quick little rundown of, of how to color grade inside of Premiere Pro, especially for beginners. I think being able to be shown the masking side of things, how to work with LUTs, especially if you're not shooting in log, and uh, of course, and how to add contrast back into your shot, how to work with colors, this, that, and the other. It's fairly important. I think this is fairly basic. We haven't dove, we haven't dived, dive, dove into every single tool here. But either way, I really, really like this shot. And we're just going to watch it back one last time. I'm a huge fan of this. Boom, boom, boom. Things are looking great. So guys, thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.